As soon as I found out Shadowheart had a fear of wolves, I wanted to make a build to switch that. I wanted to make wolves her strength. Armed with Saloon Spear of Night, we'll trick the system to make sure it returns to us so we can take advantage of all the throwing properties it has. We'll send our wolf in first and then use our abilities like magic that comes from Ranger or the abilities like Moon Motes that come from the spear to enhance everybody's strength and then begin pelting them with our three thrown spear attacks around. She's an absolute powerhouse from the get-go, able to bind any kind of weapon to her without actually having to leave the camp as a fighter. Instead of being afraid of wolves, we'll use the wolf, taking advantage of its ability to make enemies prone or septic, and then using his pretty dope AoE Force Sword move. I, I love it. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it, and I knew I had to do a build with it, and I feel like Shadowheart is just thematically perfect. Let me know in the comments what you think my next build should be, and I'll see you guys at the end. There'll be chapters below if you want to skip around. The first few levels aren't going to matter too much, but if you're starting at level 1, pick fighter. Make sure you have decent fighter stats. I mean, the ones that come with are okay. You might want to switch strength and constitution to 16. If you're going to be throwing stuff from the beginning, make sure you pick the dueling fighting style. The dueling file style does add 2 points to all your thrown weapons, as long as they have the thrown property and they are, you know, one-handed. Level 2 in fighter, who cares? Moving on. Level 3 in fighter, we're going to make sure you pick the Eldritch Knight subclass. The spells and cantrips do not matter. We're going to be getting rid of the subclass as soon as possible. But now that we have the ability to do a weapon bond, we'll dip out of wood make sure we are equipping the weapon we want to be able to return to us at all times. I pick the Saloon Spear of Night, bomb that sucker, and we're done. Now you can switch your class and we're going to go do the real build, and this is going to continue to be bound to us till the end of the day. Now to get around that, as it does unbind to you at a long rest, all you got to do is send it to your traveler's chest before you sleep. That way you won't have to redo your class every morning just to make sure your spear returns to you. Now for the real build. We're going to redo our class, and this time we're going to pick Cleric and a War Domain for our first level. This gives us tons of stuff, and also is a major help if you plan on doing an Origin run with Shadowheart herself. Giving her Guidance, Resistance, a Sacred Flame cantrip that is kind of helpful sometimes. You also get first level spells that are also amazing, like Healing Word and Command, which I always talk about, so I'll skip it this time, but Command is fantastic, you should definitely use it. Beginning stats are going to be a little different, we're going to make sure our strength is 17, Constitution and Wisdom are going to be 14s. I would put 12 in Dexterity just for some good buffer, it also help with Initiative and Medium Armor, all that good stuff. Our next levels are going to go into Ranger. I definitely suggest picking up the Fire Resistance first. It's going to be a big helpful. Fire is one of the number one elements they're going to throw at you. I'm not really satisfied with any of the choices for Favorite Enemy. Honestly, we already have access to Heavy Armor, and I'm not going to really use a bow that much. But if you plan on using a bow, Bounty Hunter is always pretty helpful. Our next level in Ranger is going to give us a Fighting Style, which we're going to pick Dueling. Dueling is going to add two points to every thrown attack. I have had issues with it progging or not. I have a 100% chance though with it progging with a thrown weapon and a shield in the other. As long as that thrown weapon has the thrown tag, the dueling should have the two points of damage pop up for you. As far as spells goes, definitely make sure you get Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark is absolutely fantastic. It's going to increase our main damage. It's going to let us concentrate on something which we'll use. And our pet animal, our wolf boy, will also benefit and get additional damage with it as well. Our next level opens up our subclass, but we'll be picking Beastmaster. Beastmaster comes with tons of pets. The theme of the build is using wolf as Shadowheart is technically afraid of wolves as part of her backstory. Hopefully that's not a spoiler. It's not a huge deal if it is, but I highly suggest playing with the other animals, especially when your ranger level is 5. They all get additional skills at level 5 and level 11. The bear, for instance, gets a skill that is a disarming attack, and if it hits, it disarms 100% of the time. It's absolutely dope. But the wolf will be using has a skill to knock people prone. Wolves also come with a passive skill called Pack Tactics, getting advantage as long as it is 5 feet next to a buddy, and if that target is Hunter's Mark, it also benefits off additional d6 of damage. Our next level in Ranger is 4th, giving us a feat. We are going to take Tavern Brawler. This is the reason why our strength was 17 and not 16. This way, our Tavern Brawler feat is going to roll that strength up to an 18 for us. This strength modifier, which is now plus 4, is going to be doubled on our to hit when we throw this spear and our damage when the spear hits. Tavern Brawler has been talked about to death, but it is 100% necessary for any throwing build. It's gonna make it almost impossible to miss, like you're gonna be seeing 90-95% constantly. Our damage is gonna be exploded with our strength score being so high. We're also gonna ting on a bunch of additional elemental damage, so we'll be doing additional fire, 
Psychic, as well as additional D4 and a D6 of piercing damage. Our next level in Fighter is going to give us a second attack and it's going to open up level 2 spells. Spike Growth is one of the best spells a ranger gets, period. It is a fantastic control spell. It does tons of damage, it slows people down. You can soup it up with different equipment like the Boots of Starving Clamor to make people have reverb when they walk through it. It's absolutely dope. But this is also when our wolf is going to level up himself. He gets a fun, cool hat, and he gets a new ability that changes his attack to necrotic, increases the damage, and increases the chance that the target will become septic. Septic lowers their constitution score by one and then makes all of their constitution saving throws become disadvantage, as well as its strength and armor class are increased by your proficiency bonus. Our next level in Ranger is going to open up our favorite ability and natural explorer again. Again, favorite enemy, don't really care. Do crazy, go nuts. Uh, but natural explorer, I do suggest taking poison. Poison is one of the highest used spells in the area that you're going to be in, which is about Act 2. Cold isn't used too much, but Poison's gonna help a lot. Our 7th level is going to open up a new abilities for our pet. Our wolf is now going to be able to dash, dodge, and use the help option as a bonus action. On paper, it's a lot of who cares, but it is super helpful having the help action as a bonus. That way he can pick people up who have dropped, stop people from being on fire, just generally good boy stuff. Our next level ranger is going to give us land stride, which is a cool ability, making us immune to our spike growth or any kind of entangle or hard to walk through stuff that's natural, but we'll also get a feat so we can roll our strength score up to 20. Our next level in ranger is going to open up third level spells, and finally ranger gets some cooler stuff. Conjure Barrage is very fun, it's not as high as damage as I want it to be, but it's a really cool AoE skill as well as Lightning Arrow, which again, isn't a super nuke, but it does a ton of lightning damage, so if you manage to get him wet first, it'll be double. And there's Plant Growth as well, which is a really cool non-concentration way to slow everybody down. Our next level in Ranger is going to open up Hide in Plain Sight, which is gonna be like a free invis as long as you don't move, so, meh. It's also gonna give us another favorite enemy, an Natural Explorer, and now we can be resistant to cold. Yay! But the next level in Ranger is what it was all for. Unlocking Beastial Fury is going to give our wolf a second attack, and level 11 unlocks their final form. Along with a major boost to their AC and health, he now has the ability to call out a Spectral Sword and use Lupin Slash in replace of any of his attacks, making a Cone attack doing 2d6 plus 2 force damage to anybody inside it. And I gotta tell you, it is addicting to use this sword on this wolf. He's now the ultimate pal. He can help you when you fall. He does tons of damage, great crowd control, dope AC, high HP, all around best boy. As far as equipment goes, I'm not just using Saloon Spear of Night just because, you know, it's Shadowheart's spear. I mean, there's a photo of her holding it in the ads, you know? It's honestly just a really dope spear, and you get it just playing the game. At the end of Act 2, following Shadowheart through the Shars Gauntlet, if you make the correct choice? Well, the good choice, not the evil choice. You'll get this at the end once you talk to Arlen at the camp. It is a plus three spear that gives the holder advantage on all wisdom saving throws and perception checks. It also gives you a dark vision up to 12 meters, which in feet is a lot maybe. It also lets you cast Moonbeam at a third level once a day and Moonmote, which is a weird enhanced version of Dancing Lights that is a massive AoE. It doesn't damage people, but they will have to make a save. If they fail it, they're in difficult terrain, and regardless, all of your allies inside that area will have a d4 of radiant damage added to all their attacks. To stack damage up on top of this spear, we have two rings automatically picked out. These are very good rings that I suggest in most throwing builds. Well, at least ones that aren't barbarian, because one of them is the strange conduit ring, which you'll find in the crush. Concentrating on a spell like Hunter's Mark or Moon Motes, you'll be adding a d4 psychic to all your melee attacks, and this also includes spear throwing. And the good old Ring of Fling. The Fling Ring you can find at Aaron. He's the first trader you'll find at Druid's Glove. This adds a d4 of whatever damage you're throwing to be added to whatever you throw. As long as it is a thrown weapon. This won't work if you pick up a Tsunami and chuck it, I tried. Further increasing our damage, another staple to all thrown builds are the Flawed Helldust Gloves. Now, typically, these add a d4 of fire to all your weapon damage. 
and if you're not using a weapon on your unarmed attacks, it does necrotic damage and makes the target bleed. Another fun little trick, if you throw a weapon while using this gloves, it'll do fire damage and cause the bleeding, because technically you're not holding a weapon at the time that the weapon hits. I definitely suggest using a shield. Using a shield with this build not only is going to ensure that the dueling damage procs, I don't know why, maybe it was just me having an issue with it, but you're not going to be using two hands with this spear anyway, so the shield's going to increase your AC, and using the Shield of Devout is also going to increase your level 1 spell slots. It also gives you a reaction to smack people down, and also lets you cast aid at third level on yourself only. You can purchase this in Act 2 from Tali the Quartermaster. I always suggest putting a ranged weapon on any kind of melee fighter, regardless if they're throwing, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of set stick ranged weapons that are perfect for so many builds. I suggest using Grendel's Aspiration. Holding onto this crossbow, regardless if you use it or not, is going to make sure all of your attacks are advantage against monsters. You can take this crossbow from him when you find him in the swamp, but if that has already passed, you can purchase the hunting bow from Daemon. It does the same thing. Decrease damage stacking with our spear, we're going to wear the Horns of the Berserker. This is going to add necrotic damage to our spear as long as we're not full health. It is going to damage us if we're not full health, but it'll be fine. You can purchase this from the Dancing Axe right in Rivington's beginning of Act 3. And before that, probably put on the Covert Cowl that you can fight in Act 2. This is going to decrease your crit ratio as long as you're not in a illuminated area. And well, Act 2 is not very bright. Hey guys, I hope you liked the build. I wanted to make a build that had a few tricks you can use for other stuff, like bonding a weapon and making a really cool throwing build. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the Pact of the Dagger as pulled by everybody at the YouTube community page. Big thank you to all my sponsors, but especially these guys right here. Anybody in the venture or higher category on any of the memberships get put in the ending credits and automatically get put into a spraffle that gets pulled every Sunday. These members are going to be voting on what shirt comes next, so drop in the comments what you think your favorite spell is that would make for a dope metal t-shirt. But until then, I'll see you guys around. Bye, I love you!